Hello, you beautiful people. Today I want to talk about five of the most underrated players in head-to-head -head points leagues this season. So before we begin, feel free to like and subscribe for NBA and fantasy content. I try to upload six times a week. And also, leave a comment down below about who you think the most underrated player in fantasy is right now. We've got a great community going on down there, and I'm interested to see your guys' picks for the most underrated players. So that being said, let's jump right into the video. Just a quick side note, I did decide to throw in a quick honorable mention at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. It's just in response to some comments I've been getting recently, so yeah, stay tuned for a surprise sixth player at the end of this video, I guess. So you already know we start with the player in the thumbnail, and that's Jaron Jackson Jr. of the Memphis Grizzlies. So, the reason I think he's so underrated, and it's pretty obvious, is just because of the injury he suffered. I mean, he hasn't played a game this season, and I was surprised to see that he wasn't even rostered in a lot of leagues. I mean, he wasn't going to be out for that long, in my opinion, and also he was just incredible for fantasy last year. He was really starting to come into his own when he got hurt. And yeah, he just makes the Grizzlies such a better team, and him and John Morant really are their future. And he's just going to get a lot of opportunities, he's going to get a lot of looks, he's a great defender if he stops fouling everything that moves, but yeah, his three-point shooting, his block shots, his rebounding ability isn't the best for a big guy, but he kind of makes up for that in other categories. And yeah, he's just an overall great player for points leagues, and I think he is heavily underrated right now just because he hasn't played yet. So if he's on the waiver wire or something for some reason in your league, i definitely go try to pick him up as he's a very underrated player right now. So next up is someone that I really want to see get traded, and that's Aaron Gordon. Now, his numbers are a bit low right now, and it's just because he sort of got off to a slow start to the season, but what's really upped his fantasy value is his increased ability in rebounding and passing the ball, honestly. I mean, over the past seven games, he's averaging 10 rebounds and 8 assists. I mean, I don't think he's going to average 8 assists for the season, but he's just improved a lot in those categories, and it really makes him a great fantasy option. I mean, he scores efficiently. If he's going to rebound the ball and then get some assists in there as well, then, like, you don't really need much more from a fantasy perspective, so I think the last seven days are more indicative of what's to come from Aaron Gordon, and I'd definitely try to trade for him if you could, just because I think he is very underrated right now, and I think his value is only going to increase. So yeah, he's the second player on our list. So next up is a bit of a surprise player coming into this season, and that's Larry Nance. I mean, I did not think Larry Nance was going to be this good of a fantasy player at this far end of the season, but so far he's just really making an impact all across the statistical categories, and it's really just helping his fantasy value. I mean, he's only averaging 10 points a game, but when you put that up with 6 rebounds, 4 assists, leading the league in steals, and a decent block rate, then that's a really solid fantasy player, and he's just going to get you a lot of points even if he's not scoring the ball just because of those peripheral stats. So yeah, Larry Nance, criminally underrated in my opinion right now, and I think he is going to maintain the level of production he's putting on right now. I, I just don't think a lot of people have really looked at him like that because he's not like one of the star names on the Cavs. But yeah, I think he's a really good fantasy player and i definitely try to pick him up if he's in your league. So moving on, we have a player that's taken a massive leap in terms of their fantasy production this year, and that's Miles Turner. Now, this is pretty much due primarily to his four blocks a game, which is still just absolutely ridiculous. Like, he's leading the league in blocks and it's not even close. I don't think he's going to maintain four blocks a game, but still, I don't see it going that much lower. And yeah, with his increased volume of three-point shots, he's really just up to scoring potential as well, and that just makes him a really good fantasy player when you add in all those factors. So yeah, I think you should definitely try to get Miles Turner if he's in your league, just because I think his value is slightly lower than it should be right now, even though he is putting up good numbers. And yeah, he's the fourth player on our list. So while this is the fifth player on our list, I decided I wanted to throw in an honorable mention just because you guys have really been supporting the videos, so stay tuned for that. But the fifth player on our list is Mikhail Bridges, and he's just turned into like the perfect 3 and D player. And normally that doesn't provide a lot of fantasy value, but when you're scoring efficiently, getting steals like Mikhail is, and like just playing a solid all-around game, that just translates into good fantasy numbers. So yeah, I feel like he is definitely underrated. Him and Larry Nance are kind of in the same boat for me. Like, I wasn't expecting either of them to really be that great of a fantasy player, and they've both just taken a really massive jump this season. So yeah, he's getting 10 field goal attempts a game, which is helping his numbers. He's getting to the free throw line. Not as much as you'd like him to, but it's Mikhail Bridges, so like, can't expect too much. And then he's averaging 15 points a game. So yeah, I think Mikhail Bridges is definitely a very underrated option in many fantasy leagues right now. And he is on, he's only rostered in 86% of leagues, and I think that should be a bit higher. So if he is on your waiver wire, I'd pick him up. And if you can get him for a bargain, I'd definitely try to trade for him as well. And lastly, we have an honorable mention. And this is someone that I personally underrated. Like, even in my top 10 centers list, I had him pretty low. And he's just making me look like a fool already. And that's Clint Capella. I mean, he has been, like, the best player in fantasy this past week. And I don't think he's going to finish as the best player in fantasy, but I think he's really just improved his fantasy numbers. Like, I think he's just an all-around better player. Playing with Trey Young and playing in Atlanta's offense is really helping him out because he's their primary shot blocker, and he's getting easy rolls to the rim when players are hard-trapping Trey Young. And he's really taken advantage of that. So 
I do think Clint Capella is massively underrated right now, and I definitely try to trade for him if he is in your league. I know someone just commented a trade with him and OG for AD, and while initially I liked that trade, I don't know if I still do as much as I thought I did, just because I think Capella really has taken that leap to being a great fantasy player. And yeah, that's going to conclude the video. Uh, I want to thank you guys very much for watching. Remember, uh, leave your comment about the most underrated players in the comments below. I didn't want to put some of the players that I put in other videos already, so that's why.